Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the program. Today I am joined by Texas Congressman Ron Paul. He is uh, he was a former presidential candidate under the Libertarian Party in 1988 and he is now running for president under the Republican Party for 2008. And uh, Congressman, thank you for uh, joining me for this interview. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, I first wanted to talk to you about the uh, Federal Reserve System. And I know that you uh, recently proposed legislation to abolish the Federal Reserve System. And do you believe that the monetary policy that is being opened by the Federal Reserve is dishonest? And do you think it's lacking appropriate transparency? Oh, obviously. You know, I, as a member of the Banking Committee and a uh, ranking member on the Monetary Policy Subcommittee, I couldn't possibly attend uh, an open market committee meeting where they de decide what interest rates should be and how much money they're going to create next week and this sort of thing. I, I'm not allowed to know that. Matter of fact, they don't even keep minutes of any importance. They have minutes, but they're just what the public wants to hear. But there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, and it's very, very important. They control literally the money of the world because the dollar is the reserve currency of the world. But it's done very, very secretly. And those who know what's going on there, it can be very, very beneficial information. But there's a lot of other reasons that I don't like the Fed. Uh, the, it, the Fed creates money, and that is inflation. When you create new money, the, uh, the rest of the money goes down in value, and then people's prices go up and this is very very detrimental and it hurts one class of people more so than the other it causes the economic bubbles that we we experience and then the collapses and uh, you know we had a nasdaq bubble collapse not Absolutely. too long ago and then we uh, now we're in the middle of a housing bubble collapse and of course since the federal reserve we've had a lot of inflation a lot of collapses when they inflate for wars and then you have the inflation uh, uh, and then a recession, and, and we've had that ongoing for a long time. The Depression was really uh, a consequence of Federal Reserve policy. But the worst part about the Fed, it allows government to grow. When government grows, they do things they shouldn't be doing, like fighting wars and controlling people here at home and having all kinds of, of domestic programs that don't work, but uh, just uh, steals and, and cause disruption. So if, if you want to strive for personal liberty, you want government to be small, but the Federal Reserve permits the members of Congress and the politicians to expand government without being responsible. You know, they can just tax so much, they can borrow so much, but then they have an unlimited ability to print money in order to expand the Abs size of government. Absolutely. Now, how do you think we should restore our monetary system to something more honest? Do you believe that we should go back to a gold and silver standard, as was uh, proposed by the founding fathers of this country, or do you think that we should just go to printing U.S. notes instead of being printed by... Uh, private Federal Reserve. What, uh, what do you think we should should do in order to restore an honest, honest monetary system? In well, this we country? should just go to the Constitution, look for our guidance. It says only gold and silver can be legal tender. When they debated this um, at the Constitutional Convention, you know, they debated paper. They had had the runaway uh, fiat currency of the continental dollar, uh, and they didn't want it to happen. So they said there will be no emitting bills of credit, which was paper money. So we'd have to ha go back to gold and silver coins. But I don't like the notion that we have to return to exactly what we had in the 19th century because there, there right. were some shortcomings. We had bimetallism, so the government went and fixed the ratio of gold to silver. And markets uh, don't, uh, governments can't set a, a market price. So you should either in turn it over completely to the marketplace and let private money evolve and let them use gold and silver. Or if the government uh, was to be involved, uh, they, they should issue, you know, a currency and define it as a weight of gold or a weight of silver, but not fix the ratio. And, and that, to me, would be a better standard than we had in the 19th century. Absolutely. Now, sir, I have another question for you. And this pertains to the uh, Presidential Work Group on Financial Markets, the uh, Plunge Protection Team. And uh, I've been trying to find information about this group, and it seems pretty secretive. Um, I'm not sure if they release any minutes of the meetings. And uh, do you know who attends these meetings? And is it possible to get any information about what these people do? Because there's a lot of people who believe that the, this group manipulates the stock market, and there's people have a lot of questions about it. And uh, could you elaborate on that? Yeah, that's a pretty darn good question because not a lot of people know about the uh, plunge protection team of the president's working group on financial markets. It actually was set up by Reagan by executive order after the uh, stock market crash of 1987. 
And uh, this is a secretive group that's made up of the uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve, secretary of the Treasury, who's the chairman of the committee, mm -hmm. and uh, chairman of SEC and the uh, Commodity F uh, Futures Trading Board. They, and that, that means they control a lot. Absolutely. Uh, currency markets, commodity markets, bond markets, stock market, and uh, the whole works plus our U.S. Treasury. But interestingly, uh, I have asked this question about exactly what you've asked. I've asked it to Bernanke, and he just totally dodged the issue and sort of ridiculed the fact that mm -hmm. I would ask about it. But just this week, uh, I had my first chance to ask the question to uh, Secretary Paulson. Uh, he was before our committee just a couple days ago. And I asked him that question, but I never had a chance to follow up because of you know, the time, uh, time shortage. But uh, he gave a fluff answer, you know, and my question was is when do you meet, how often do you meet, what do you do, uh, do you keep minutes, uh, have you ever made any decisions, have you ever taken any actions? And his answer was very glib and superficial. Yeah, we meet, but we tell everybody what we're doing and we sometimes suggest this and this. So I have followed up with a more precise letter to him, which we're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is, have they ever taken any action to interfere in the market? And you probably have heard that uh, there's a lot of suspect that uh, uh, our government or our government in collusion with other governments have probably manipulated the gold price. Yes, yeah, so that was my next question and, for you, uh, actually. <laughs> and uh, I asked him that, uh, actually mentioned that in the question that, you know, a lot of people believe this to be the case, but he didn't refute it. I'm going to hope I can get him to, to refute it. Very good. Um, move on to IRS. And this is, uh, I know you've uh, come out staunchly opposed to the IRS. You want to abolish it. And currently there's a situation up in Plainfield, New Hampshire with Ed and Elaine Brown. And these people are simply asking the government to show them the law that requires them to pay uh, income tax on their labor. And instead of the government showing them the law, they send a bunch of U.S. Marshals with guns and uh, urban assault vehicles. And I, I'm wondering, what do you think this tells us about the IRS and the legality of the income tax? Well, it, it's, it gives you the perfect reason why we have to get rid of this monster, you know, because of what has happened. And a lot of individuals have taken the IRS on, and some of them have suffered from it. It sounds like they may be yeah. on the verge of suffering or already have suffered. For, Mr. Schiff, for example. Yeah. They, 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 you go to prison, and what they're doing is they're standing up for the law, because the law is the Constitution. Other individuals have done this on the monetary issue. You know, that Federal Reserve notes aren't legal tender. Gold and silver are legal tender, and they go and fight it. So you fight it at your own risk, There's a, because it's civil disobedience according to their system. It's, it's weird that you're breaking the law when you're obeying the Constitution, but that's the point we're at. So in many ways, the people who point this out and fight the tax code and fight the monetary system are heroic. I mean, I. I gave a speech in the House floor just recently and called them the true patriots. But I also point out that it's risky business. And I, and I compare them to people like Gandhi, who's willing to speak out and, have, uh, and, and try to bring about change in a peaceful manner. Martin Luther King fought laws that were unfair and unjust, but mm -hmm. he suffered too. But it takes people like that to stand up and talk about these things and point it out instead of us all being zombies and just going along. And uh, it, it is easier to go along with, with, with the system because, uh, you know, just the idea of, of uh, how many times have just about all of us given up our Social Security number? Sure. I mean, I give it up. I shouldn't do it on some of those occasions, but I have a bill in Congress that would uh, emphasize the fact that Social Security numbers should never be used as an identifier because that's the law of the land. That's the way it was started and still in the code. But, you know, it's universal. It's going to be tied to our national ID card, which is our driver's license. So it, it, uh, it, it takes people uh, like the Browns to stand up and bring this to attention. But, they're, you know, it's risky business because government is so omnipotent.